Let's just stand with the Lord this morning. I just want to say we went to see <coughs> Brother John Crothers Friday night, and uh, he was getting out Saturday, so he might be home. Uh, they're going to try it out, so uh, it looks like, as far as I know, he's going to be home. So, But he still needs some prayers and, and help, and uh, my mother get, might get out of the hospital by the end of this week, too, as well, so that's good news, and we just want to thank the Lord for that. Is there prayer requests this morning as we look to the Lord? Set Marco? Got kidney stone. That hurts. Yeah, for Jan as well, yes. Your granddaughter, yes, okay. All right, let's all lift up our voice. Heavenly Father, as we come before thee, we thank the Lord. Lord, you've seen this day, you've seen this service, but Lord, we're asking at this time, Lord, that you would meet the prayer request that's been brought before thee. Lord, touch these bodies that has need a touch of thee, Lord. And Lord, there may be some with unspoken requests, Lord. I know, Lord, you're able to calm the, the troubled waters. And Lord, we're ever so thankful for your word and your truth in this hour. Now commit the service in your hands. In that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Can you see it this morning? I'm going to ask Brother Mike to come lead us in the song service. Number 213 in the red book.
251 in the red book? 251 in the red book. Five in the blue book. <coughs> As the world looks upon me. As I struggle
Brenda, could you start the chorus on the 107 there? I'm not quite sure. Oh, so 
Linda, do you have a song? He measured the sea by the palm of his hand. Mountains were placed at his command. And at the sound No. 
star and he hung them on high. The moon gave its light across God's sky. And the same mighty God can take a heart of stone. He can wash it. I know he will help you And if he holds the sparrows and flies He holds you too Consider the lilies in the field How much more he loves you Beginning of time, you were on his mind when he hung the moon. Beginning of time, he was the creator. Into existence, he spoke the heaven blue and when the night he swooped up his hand he threw out the stars he knew where they would land so if you think you're drifting along well I have good news if he hung the moon I know he will help you And if he holds the sparrows in flight He holds you too Consider the lilies in the field How much more he loves you the beginning of time you were on his mind when he hung the moon when you feel like the world is hurt on your shoulders and even 
your closest friend in life is pulling away do you have tried so hard and lost there is still hope Just look to the cross and there you will see just how much to say still loves you today if we hung the moon I know he will help you and if he hold the sparrows and fly he holds you too Considered it lily in the field, how much more he loves you. In the beginning of time, he were on his mind when he hung the moon. And if he hung the moon, I know he help you and if he holds the sparrows and fly he holds you too consider a lily in the field how much more he loves you in the beginning of time he round his mind He hung the moon Praise the Lord I just want to thank the Lord that He touched me that day and That I know Him And the Last while I just can't get out of my mind how Last time Mims was here and when he kept mentioning that it's finished, it's done, whatever God has spoken, it was done. And I know through the years I failed them at times, but every time I reach for him, he's there. And yeah. And, and in my small mind, all I can think and reflect back to is how I love my own children. Yeah. And then I look back to him and read through the passage of his words and how any promise that he makes he has kept, and he'll see us through on the day he comes for us. And actually, it was a word that came. I was in, during uh, Brother Stroman's ministry, we were in St. John, and it was on June 10th, because it was my birthday, I'll never forget. And the word came back to me that not to dwell on my past, my testimony would be a living testimony, that he would gently guide me through on the, the day he comes for me. Well, thank you, Lord. We serve an amazing God. Amen. Amen. David was so small 
And Goliath, though so tall, odds were just too high for little David. So he took off all his load, but with the power of God he was clothed. He said, the battle's not mine, give it to you. Of that dreaded her money and bought position, but only Jesus could bring relief, and so her lack dread of hold it was worn down to rest, but her heart held on to faith. Till she could touch him with her hands. When your hands by a thread, till you can be mine, life's tough. Though the cliffs are rough and jagged, you can cold. You should slip and reach rope's end. You'll find him on his garment. So don't let go to that last thread of hope. Is that you? Oh, 
holding on to a frayed and fragile faith. And are you clinging to the rocks above the canyon of dismay? Reach out for the lifeline. It will never break it too. Hold fast, don't lose heart. For once again, he'll pull you through. And when you're hanged by a thread, still you can climb life's mountain. Though the cliffs are rough and jagged, you can call if you should slip and reach ropes in you'll find the ham on his garment so don't let go to that last thread of hope a woman she needed healing of that dreaded disease. Her money had bought physician, but only Jesus could bring relief. And so her last thread of hope, it was worn down to a strand. But her heart held on to faith till she could touch him with her hand. And when you're hanging by a thread till you can climb life's mountain, though the cliffs are rough and jagged, you can and cold if you should slip and reach ropes end you'll find the hem on his garment so don't let go to that last thread of hope and when you're hanging by a thread Till you can climb life's mountain. Though the cliffs are rough and jagged, you can cope. If you should slip and reach rope's end, you'll find the hem of the hem of his garment. So don't let go. To that last thread of hope. Oh, don't let go. To that last thread of hope. For he's an unkind God. Oh, he is. on time. 
but what do you know? From out of nowhere, he made a highway just like that. So you know that he's been on time. Oh, God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, if we come to this part of the service, Lord, we are thankful, Lord, that we can approach thy throne of grace. Lord, as we would look into your word this morning, I just pray, Lord, you'd have your way and and Lord, we are ever so thankful for the day that we're living in. And Lord, this time I thank you, Lord, for thy nation of Israel too, Lord, that's going through battles. But uh, Lord, you're able to undertake. Now, Lord, as we begin to thy word, just pray, I, Lord, Lord, I just pray that you would have your way in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You can uh, be seated. I heard, uh, I was on the internet and I heard this preacher, and I don't know, you might have heard it before or not, but he was talking about a young man that he, had, he was going to start to preach, but he had never preached before, so he was asked to come to preach. And so his text was, behold, I come quickly. And he wanted to be, you know, accepted by what he's saying to the to the people, and so when he went, uh, behold, I come quickly, and then he forgot the rest of the verse. So he backs up, he collects his thoughts, comes back in, behold, I come quickly. And, and then again, he had a, you know, you can have a blockage in your mind, so he, so when he's finished, this time he says, this time he, he, he packs it down in his mind, what he's going to say. So he moves over to the side of the pulpit, and he gets really exuberant. Behold, I come quickly. And as, as he done that, he, uh, he, clips, he clips the cord, falls down in the congregation, falls down on an old man, knocks him off his chair, and they're both on the floor. And he says, sorry, sir, I, I apologize. It was my first sermon. I was a bit exuberant. The old man is there, and he looks up at him. Well, yeah, he says, but I don't think it's your fault. I says, he says, it's my fault. Well, what do you mean? Well, you told me you were going to come quickly three times.
just to show that both weren't really paying attention what they should have been doing. <laughs> but anyway, so he did come quickly <laughs> for that old man. <laughs> that old man. But that's uh, beside the point. This morning, let's turn to the book of John, the Gospel of John. Still on gathering in the summertime, part two, what I started last week. But to begin with this morning, I want to start in 1 John, in the scripture in the 12th verse. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, and even to them that believe on his name. Now, we can look at it in the terms, yes, Jesus said he gave them power to become the sons of God. And we hear that, and we, yeah, we know that. But really, what does it all entail? When, you, when we come down to really down to look at it. In that everyone is born again, that will receive power. Not every one of us has the same measure of the Holy Ghost when the new birth occurs. And so therefore, as our faiths differ, the measure of the Holy Ghost differs. But the great eternal spirit that knows all things, he knows you better than you know yourself. And he knows your ability, doesn't he? Because sometimes some ability that you, when you were come to the Lord, you didn't realize you've had. But God knows that ability, so he gives a measure of the Spirit to the ability that is going to be needful for you to come in your position and in your place in the body of Christ. So when he talks about here that he gave them power to become the sons of God, yes, that's, it's in its simplest form, if you want to, looking at it. But the, what he gave, we can't be like, like some uh, people in the world. Well, it's not fair. You didn't give the same to everybody. It, God doesn't look at it that way. He knows who can handle what. He knows our ability. And the ability can lie in within, as a believer, in the different gifts and how to walk in the Holy Ghost. So he gives a measure of the spirit that you and I can handle that can change us. If he gave a 30-fold, 100-fold measure, he'd burst. He wouldn't be able to make it in the sense that it, would, it wouldn't fit him. He wouldn't be able to attain, I'll put it that way. Now, knowing those things, now I'm going to put another layer on top of this. Where are you going with this this morning? Well, it's time we look at it in certain things in certain depths because then when we go a little further into scriptures a little bit more deeper, then we have something to relate to as we're looking at those scriptures. The other part you'll find in Matthew, now don't turn to it. It's in Matthew chapter 25, it's in Matthew chapter 24, it's in, in Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 19. In Matthew, he says he gave talents. Now what's a talent? Well, sometimes we can make it so simple, say, oh, that's revelation. Yes, it is in this much that incorporated in the revelated word of God is the part for you and I are for walking, but it's also the part of the revelated word of God in walking in the light of the day that you're living in. And so therefore, he gave talents according to the ability that he sees his child can handle. Now, where do we get these abilities, or where do we find out where these abilities, where we can go looking for them? Well, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'll start at the fourth verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 
Now there are diversities of the gifts of the Spirit. And there are different admonition, but the same Lord. But there are diversity of the operations, but it is the same Lord that worketh all in all. Now, in there is a measure for us to walk in the Holy Ghost, but there's also a measure that he gives in the body of Christ, and God gives it to whom he will, how he will, concerning the nine spiritual gifts. That's part of the bride of Jesus Christ is to have. And really, in the hour that we live in, that should be looking in that focus in that area because somewhere's up the road, God's going to move in a miraculous manner. And those things will become up front and, and center uh, when the time comes. Now, that don't mean everybody going, going off several ways for Sunday for a whole bunch of uh, the different nine spiritual gifts. But it will be there to minister to the body because remember, the body ministers to itself as far as the spiritual gifts is concerned as those nine spiritual gifts. But in Corinthians, Paul goes into a other part of it as well. And when we drop down a little further, well, we'll read from there, I guess. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit therewith. Now, if he's given the Holy Ghost to profit therewith, is that not the same thing when he gave talents and pounds to increase the profit therewith? Not just say, well, thank you, Lord, you gave me that, and I'm just going to settle here and, and be a good child of God, and I'll live as well as I can. And No, he wants you to profit to go further because God has in mind in his plan for this to grow somewhere. Now, it's not all, everything's going to be done overnight, but we have to realize we're living in that last generation. So if there's ever a climax to come that the church is to receive and to walk in these things, it is going to be before the rapture takes place. All right. To one is given the spirit of word of wisdom, to another the words of knowledge, to the same the, the same spirit, and to another faith, and to another, another spirit, and to another gift, the gift of healing by the same spirit, to the working of miracles, and to, the, and to another prophecy, and to another discernment of spirits, and diverse kinds of tongues, and another the interpretation of tongues. So that's only one part of the walk with the Lord. Now, I hope the Lord doesn't have to spank us. If, he's, if you're a vessel, he's going to use in that direction. When, then we must meditate and seek the Lord that he may use you whatever gift. Now, you can't choose the gift you want, but he knows what you can handle and how he's going to work out for you. And by using that gift, not only you will prosper with it, but the whole church will prosper with it if it's done in according to the word of God. But then we go now to verse 12. For there's many, for in the body, for as the body is one and has many members and all members of one, another, of one body, being many and are one body, so also is Christ. Oh, okay, thank you. Now, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, verse 11 says, But all these workers by one and the selfsame spirit, dividing severally to every man severally as he will. So God gives, he's the one that gives it. But when we come down to verse 28 and on downwards, now Paul, the apostle Paul is touching the parts that the thing we're going to Prophet all within, he talks about in this manner. For God has set in some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, gifts of healings, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. Now, not everyone has everything that's mentioned there, but in whatever measure, that in that 28th verse, whatever God has assigned 
seeing that you are going to be worked to bring these out, you are to profit they're all with all, whether it is in the nine spiritual gifts, whether it is in government, or whether it is in the ministry. So he wants us to all profit they're all with whatever he has given us. Now the thing is, do you know what he's given you? Are we just coming to church? Yeah. I got my favorite seat over here and I'm saved. I'm a child of God. You know he has a work cut out for each member in the body of Christ. And are we going to sit around and say, well, Lord, somebody will come and tell me what it is one of these days. No, let's not be lazy in that manner. We ought to be seeking him and it's, you won't know it overnight, but as you walk in your life, you'll get to see in what direction he's using you for. And we can't say, well, Lord, uh, that's fine, but I want something else. Uh-uh, that don't work with him. He knows exactly what we can handle. So therefore, to know how to live for God and to work in a body that functions properly, we do need to know what our function is. And not only know what our function is, but he puts a requirement on it. He wants you to profit therewith or to increase. Oh, I thought I'd just have to come to church and listen to the preacher. No, that won't change you. If you're just leaning on a man, that won't work either. You have to lean on that Holy Ghost that leads you. It's that Holy Ghost that will move you to that position you ought to be in the body of Christ. Let's go to Ephesians now. Chapter 4. Oh, this is a very familiar scripture. Starting at the seventh verse, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, what is the gift of Christ? Oh, that's eternal life. Yes, in a simple term it is. But the gifts he also gives you it could be in a ministry, it could be in government, and it could be in operations of the gifts, of the nine spiritual gifts. And so he gave gift to men. Even the, he's gave gift to all of us, even if it is a simple little gift. Well, some say, well, I don't know, I, God never used me. There may come a day he'll use you one time that's going to be really predominant. Or he may use you more than one time. But somewheres, if he's going to use us with whatever capacity, we ought to seek and get ourselves prepared to be a, a child of his that's ready to meet the master's requirements. It's not going to come out like you order something out of the catalog. God does not have no catalogs that you can order this from. It don't come just falling like manna out of heaven. Oh, my goodness, here it is. First of all, if there's going to profit the all, there's going to have to be some growth, there's going to have to be some dying, there's going to have to be some changing taking place. And that's to every member that's in the body of Christ. So he gives unto us, he give us grace, he give us grace or mercy, free gift, according to the measure of the gift. Wherefore he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gift unto men. Now, he that ascended, what is it? But he also that descended first into the lower part of the earth. Now, it shows when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he went to the lower part of the earth. He took those that were in captivity, uh, the, righteous saint, the righteous that was in the lower part of the earth, that was in hell. He brought them out of the grave after his resurrection and he brought them on high. But when he brought them on high, he gave gifts to the church. 
No, it ain't a bank account. But it's a gift that you can carry that will be worthwhile for you in the spirit when we are changed or in the millennium. That holds more value than any gold that you have in your account, bank account. Because that gold, you can't take it with you. I know the Bible talks about the streets of gold, but that's, that's just a carnal understanding that's going to be streets of gold in heaven. The goal is to trial your faith that's like gold so that you can be shining something that's sturdy and non-changing like gold. Because when gold is refined, gold does not change. All right. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. What is that perfection of the saints? What's it, what does he mean by perfecting the saints? First of all, if the, if the writers would have put a, a more proper word, it would have been for the completion of the saints. So he gave that ministry so the bride could come to her completion as a whole through the grace age. But it would be here at the end time where the completion should be made. And you can't come to completion being in a Baptist church, in a Pentecostal church, or just in Brother Brown's movement, or just in Brother Jackson's movement. God is moving today because he's still moving on to bring this bride to completion. Otherwise, if it was all done in the day of Brother Jackson, we're complete. We have come to perfection. We just got to iron out the little kinks. My foot so that there is for the perfecting of the bride as a whole, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Now, that means the ministry has to work till this bride comes to completion. And not only the ministry, but every believer must profit their all with what gift he's given you. You have, doesn't the Bible say to work out your salvation? What do you not understand of the word W-O-R-K? Sit at home, watch TV when you leave here. Now, I don't mean you have to go on your knees and, and just seek on the Lord every minute, but somewhere there should be some time for him, for your benefit and for your growth. You can come across... Some individual that you might have seen a while back. And they haven't grown for what you had, let's say, in common at that point in time. And you, you see them 20 years later, and they're still there. There's no growth. But they claim to be God's child. Well, God's child has to have that hunger. If there's no hunger for no, no growth, then I'd say that would be a bad situation. It's time to get on our knees and, Lord, what do you want in my life in order to be part of that bride, to be jointly fitted in, to be in that bride for the completion? Now it says, now, verse 12 talks about perfecting the saints, okay? But then in verse 13 he says, till we all come in the unity of the faith, believing the same revelation. I went to the UPC church, I'd say, do you have the unity of the faith? Oh, yes, we had that a long time. We organized around it and, and, and were perfected. That's not where it lies. God's always moving. They didn't see that there had to be a growth. Now, I'm not, for, not condemning the people that are there. It's the leadership that keeps them there. Yes, there's people that don't want to move either. They just want to have, know enough of God to keep the devil off their shoulder and think they're going to heaven. That can happen in any denomination or any move. But he says, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. 
Now we can put that in a simple term. Oh, the knowledge of the Son of God. Yes, we've got the revelation of the Godhead today. Is that all there is? That you know who he is? That there is a Godhead? There's one God, eternal spirit, invisible, that fills the whole universe. And he put all his attributes in his only begotten son. Jesus is the visible representation of you are my heavenly father. He that's your heavenly father will never be your elder brother, and your elder brother will never be your heavenly father. Oh, we got that down pat. Some, some do, anyway. But is that all we need to know about Jesus? Don't we want to know more than he's part of that Godhead? There's more to Jesus than just the Godhead. The knowledge, when we come to the knowledge of the Son of God, is the knowledge of all the knowledge he has. And when you read the book of Revelation, chapter 1, it, says, it talks about in that first chapter, Blessed is he that readeth and understandeth. That's in verse 3 of the first chapter. Blessed he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep these things that are written therein for the times at hand. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. We're supposed to hear something. But watch, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave to him. When? When did Jesus receive the revelation of the book of Revelation? Huh? Which God gave unto him to show to his servants. Show to his servants what? Who Jesus is and all that pertains to Jesus. So it's just not knowing, oh, I know the Godhead in, in Ephesians chapter 4. But it's to know who he is and what pertains to him. Knowing about someone is one thing. But no, to know someone, you have to know his thoughts or his mind or, or whatever needs to be brought forth, right? If I came here and said, yeah, that's Brother Fred. I uh, heard his, that's what his name was. But if I never spoke, you wouldn't know me. you just know, well, he's five foot seven and a little chubby and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Hardly no hair. I don't mind that. But that's, I just want to get the point across. You, you see me with your physical eyes, but you don't know the person that's inside the vessel. And it's the same thing to know the Lord Jesus Christ. To know the Son of God is not just to know that he's part of the Godhead, which is, yes, was a revelation that the devil attacked all through the grace age. But in the last times, in these last days, God has now restored that revelation of it. But to know him is more than just knowing that he's part of the, he's the, he's the Godhead, if you want to, in the sense that God is in him, redeeming you and I. And Christ lives in us by faith, by revelation. Jesus lives in you and I by revelation. Because he said one day, Father, make them one like we are one. And if Christ is in you everywhere in actuality, hey, you're into everybody too. Does that make sense? No. But anyway, getting back to the knowledge of the Son of God. So to know the knowledge of the Son of God, this is the day, there's another scripture, and Peter talks about, in the day of the revelation of Jesus Christ. That was not for Peter's day, not for Paul's day, not for Luther. But it is in this end time that God was going to open up a whole lot of things in the hour that we live in. Now when we take, now you don't have to turn to it, I'm just going to speak about it. You all know what the scriptures are anyway. Like in Matthew chapter 25, well, you can turn to it if you want. So, give you some exercise for your hands and your fingers. Keep your weight. Matthew 
verse 15. I'll start at verse 14 to give you the background. For the kingdom of heaven is like to a man traveling into a far country. Now, what, whether you know it or whether you can't, if you re, re, didn't remember it, this parable of Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 14, has its roots from the early church and will spread the uh, condition that will lay in the grace age. But when you read Luke chapter 19, it does not have its origin in that first church age. It has its origin in this hour. But there's a difference as you would read. I just thought I'd mention that. But anyway, here, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who call his servants, that's the ministry, and deliver them his goods. And he gave one five talent, and to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. That's what we're talking about here. Now, if he's given the abilities to the men for the ministry, just because it doesn't man mention the believer, now remember, when he gave gift unto men, or when he gave you the Holy Ghost to become the sons and daughters of God, there are gifts, yes, to be part of the body of Christ too, that you and I are to increase. That don't mean, oh, he didn't mention about, if I'm not in the ministry, I don't have to worry about increasing. Yes, you do. Because the believers increase alongside as the ministry increases. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. He that receives a good man in the name of a good man receives a good man's reward. So there is increase all the time. But here he's mainly talking about the, the ministry. But when we go down to verse 26 of Matthew 25. Now we know that evil servant. Was well, he so bad that he was cursing and lying and carousing in the world? No, that's not why he's calling him evil. It's not evil in that manner, but he's evil because he didn't listen to God's word. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. That gets me back to the scripture I quoted last week in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. He that gathers in the summer is a wise son. In other words, he's looking for increase. He's working. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a cause for shame. So now as we look at that 26th verse, he says, that was a slothful servant. In other words, he was lazy. Why was he lazy? He didn't care too much. He just wanted to float, float along with let's, whatever revelation he had come to. Well, maybe I could use a better illustration here. Before I get to the, the picture that you see on the screen, I want to finish this verse a bit. He says, I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. To us, that's not common language that we use, because it's a parable. But all he's saying in those words is, you should increase. You should gain. But where does this all apply, this gain? Now, I'm going to bring out something in this banner. Yes, there's always somebody new coming along in whatever time period you want as going through. But what we're looking at being under tutorship, when God looks at it as far as the bride is concerned, every move of God has a main man that God uses. 
whether it was whatever, even in Luther's day, if you want to. So while Luther, I'll use Luther, because then that's more related to what I want to get at. So in the days of Luther, as the Lord brought the revelation, the just shall live by faith, and there were a few other things that Luther had. And yes, Luther was a Trinitarian. Well, is Luther a part of the bride? Yes, he is, because God holds the requirement that much for his hour. But you can't take Luther's message and saying, I'm going to the bride like Luther is. You have to walk in the hour that you're living in, in this third watch. So as Luther now starts to spread forth the gospel, as people hears it, they are under tutorship. While that servant is speaking out, they are learning things under tutorship. But then when it's the father has an appointed time when the tutorship is over. So if we're looking at it not as a life of individual, but as movements, as God now moves to another servant, as one goes off the scene, now those servants or the people that was under tutorship, now they move into where they're seasoned, and they must, now what they've been given, now remember, under tutorship, they receive revelation. Now if we're bringing up today in the days of Brother Branham, people receive things new and old. They're not the one that, that dug it out, because as they heard, they were under tutorship, and the Holy Ghost was more or less overshadowing them to hear it. But then it comes a day, God takes that prophet off the scene, and now he brings an apostle on the scene. Now, as far as the movement, as God's looking at them, remember, yes, we can put individuals all over the place, but we're looking at spirit of time, as movements are concerned. When that movement starts, there's a group that comes into it, they're under tutorship. When that man that God has in place moves off the scene and moves further, now you are no longer under tutorship. And what you receive under tutorship is wonderful. But what you receive under tutorship does not give you the gain or the increase when, he's, when he talks about in these parables. is when these servants go out forth ministering or when you are now uh, under tutorship as a member in the body of Christ now you moved into this area, you are to be an example or a show of what has been over there and God wants to see an increase, not just the same thing that you were the same old person back there. As a whole, if you want to. You follow my thought. So, while we were, while, now for you and I, the generation that we live in, we were under tutorship under an apostolic ministry. And we've seen a lot of things that was new in the word of God and all things that was old that God brought and opened up. Was it you or I that dug it out? No, God had a man because he uses a single man to bring forth a revelation to keep the line on the word of God at the time. Just like he did the Brother Branham, just like he did when or Luther or Wesley or the different men that God used down through time, God uses a principal voice to speak with. But now as we have received things new and old, now that the apostles has, God has brought him off the scene, now we're into this movement called the fivefold ministry. Because according to the Ephesians chapter 4 we were in a while ago, the bride is to be made perfect or complete by the fivefold ministry. Not by Brother Branham, not by Brother Jackson, but we need everything Brother Branham taught, we need everything that Brother Jackson taught, and everything that's going to be taught in this hour to bring the bride to completion. So now we are no longer under tutorship, you and I that sat under that apostolic ministry. Did we just sit down and what the apostle taught? Where's the hunger? What's really transpiring? 
I'm not going anywhere further. I'm scared to move further. Or I'm not sure to move further. Or I don't know how to move further. You've lost your first love. Love for fresh divine truth. That's what happened to the early church, towards the Ephesian church, towards the end. Then that spirit of nicotine came in. It corrals people and stopped them there. You see it in every move of God. That nicotine spirit, once those have been under tutorship and moves on further, Satan comes into the pack and starts to corral things that they don't move any much further. If I was to say to the Branham people, you have the word for the hour? Oh, yes, we do. Are you going to interrupt you? Oh, yes, we are. But it's hid from their eyes. Now, granted, in every move, there's always some that will go into wild things. And then the other, there's two extremes. They go, either some go into wild things and others just draw circles and they don't go any further than what the group does. They check with one another to make sure that, is it okay that, well, we got it. We are the, the word for the day. But God bypasses all that and he moves anyway with his word. Isn't that what happened to Brother Jackson? And it's happening in this hour. But I'm thankful that the Lord... Now, what's missing in all of these things? We, he's expect us to increase to profit therein with what he has given us. And if I'm in a place where I'm not profiting or growing more further on, then the warning bell should go on. Because I'd have to say, whatever move you're in, what makes you different from the previous move of you? Really? What makes you different? Just because you've got a, uh, an extra revelation more than the others? Is that what makes you part of the bride? No. You have to have an increase. Now some will go on the, on the horn and yeah, there you, there, there's all kinds of voices and wild revelations out there. Yes, there's wild revelation. But God will take a servant and point where those things are wrong. But if you can't bring anything to prove what's, what's been brought by a, a true servant of God being wrong, then I have to say something's wrong somewhere. Because God, well, he did it with Brother Branham, he did it with Brother Jackson. The same way. All right, we're going to move on. So now, as, this, as these servants, they neglect it to grow. They got lazy. How do you get lazy? And how do you get people to sleep? The only thing I can think of, and I know it's a bit radical looking at it that way, but if I stayed in the Catholic Church, and over the course of two years, I'd hear the same thing, the same thing, just maybe present in a different way, but it's the same thing, the same thing. Well, yes, it's true, God's words don't change, but where's the advancement? There's no advancements in the Catholic Church. So what happens when you hear the same things? Time and time again, you get your ears get heavy. Oh, you understand it. Yeah, well, we heard that before, and yeah, we have to go to church, you know, and, and, and it's... That don't mean we need a revelation every Sunday in that manner, but somewhere God should be feeding something live, something fresh, that the Word can support. That makes the difference. And when there's a hunger, people wants to come. 
But if I would be here preaching John 3.16 for 52 Sundays, I dare say half the crowd would be gone. The interest would be gone. Well, we can, well, I've heard it so many times, I think I'll just watch it on the internet. I can lay back my lazy boy chair at home and if I need, well, I'll just listen a while. Well, maybe there may be a good movie, I'll watch that instead. That's when the hunger leaves. But then when God feeds us fresh meat, then there becomes uh, an expectation. That's where the first love lies. It's an expectation of the love of his word coming fresh, reviving you. Oh, praise God. I know I don't want to go back to that Catholic church. Or whether it's a Baptist church. Or a Pentecostal church, the same thing. Or the Branham movement. What are they saying all the time? God said a prophet. He revealed... Six seals, some say, well, he revealed the seven. You've got to dig it out. And yes, that God's, that, he's the voice that God was sending in this hour to wake things up. And there are areas that never heard it. Well, that's fine. But if that's all the message that I'm doing, then as that church or that believer that's in the assembly is not growing. That was done in 1963. Now, that's almost 50, what, four years or so? Or some 50 years, anyway. Oh, yes, they'll have a preacher go on and maybe take some of the things of Brother Banner and turn it into a more exciting message. But there's still nothing new. Now, it seems like in this hour, something new is like a dirty word. It's antichrist, anti-God. We're coming to a showdown. Every group thinks they are the bride. Even the Baptists. But when the air of the miraculous falls on ground, what's going to happen? God's going to start to exposing things. He's going to move by his spirit. And that at that hour... Those that don't think that they were slumbering or sleeping or not watching, that will be front, center, right there, as clear as clear could be. What's it going to be? We don't know. God has reserved that for that time, that period of time there. All right. Now, in Mark, the 13th chapter, verse 34... As Mark takes to record the parable Jesus was talking about, in Mark chapter 13, verse 34, he says, For the Son of Man is if a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man, not just the ministry here, His work. Oh, what's that? We have to work? Work out your own salvation. And he commanded the porter to watch. That's the Holy Spirit of God. He's the one watching. And he says, watch therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, or at even, or at midnight, or the cock crowing, or in the morning. Now, Mark sees four watches. Well, that takes from the 1900 from Azusa Street to to 1947, which is the first watch in Brother Branham's, then to Brother Jackson is the uh, 
third, and the fourth one is the, is the one of the fivefold ministry. But now in, so he says, you know not what hour that he comes. And then he says in, in verse 36, says, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. Now why would he put that in there? In case, in case he comes, you find you sleeping. Because there are people that's going to be found sleeping. They're not gathering in the summertime. For I say unto all, watch. And when he says all, that means the servant as well as every man is to work. It's to profit with all with the Spirit of God that he's given us to increase. When you went to school and you learned everything in grade one, which probably was a breeze, Did grade two, you stayed where you were? Didn't do much? Just spending time, spinning your wheels? School expected you to grow till you got to the place that you got ready to go to work because you were under tutorship. You were supposed to receive things. But once you receive things under tutorship in school, oh, I got it made. I got a course now. I can be a mechanic. I'll use that as an example. Now, if you're a mechanic, no disrespect, please. I don't need to know anything anymore, more than what I've learned. And so he goes out working in his field, fixing cars. Then all of a sudden, maybe in a couple of years down the road, no more of the old distributor cap. Now it's an electronic unit that's put in there. He never learned that. Then ABS brakes. Oh, what's that? So there had to be a, he needed a continual improvement of the ability that was given to him. Now I'm using that as a natural illustration. He had to learn under tutorship. But if he stayed just in his tutorship, he's not, time will find him out that he's not ready to function in the world. So he'll be a mechanic found to be shame like the son that was found shame that was sleeping at the harvest time. Because if he's living in today's car, I mean, you think that a computer on board of the car with ABS brakes and all these other things that they have there in there now, now they're going to have a driverless car with a major computer in there that does everything. He's going to have to learn to talk computer language. <laughs> Well, is it not the same like the body of Christ? While we are under tutorship, that is your base to God starting you with, you and me with. But then when he puts you and I in the front line, now to be that generation, we are supposed to increase. No, you won't get the increase maybe when you're under tutorship because you had a lot to learn. But when you come into service, then there are things that's going to be needful because time and progress always moves forward. The Word of God always moves forward. And I'm thankful that he does. Because the, the course that I've taken, if I just took that attitude, well, that's all I need to know, don't need to know much, more than that, I'd have been lost. <laughs> And the employer would come one day and say, well, you need to know these things, and if you don't, then here's the pink slip. All right. So in that we're in this time here, I'll read a couple of verses before I finish here. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5, it says, A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. Now, in the natural, yes, you're in school, you hear with your physical ear. But if we are to increase in the Lord, you have to hear with your spiritual ear. 
And it's not because the preacher is speaking that you're hearing with a spiritual ear. It may, it may, God may use that. But it's the Holy Ghost inside that is the ear that we need to hear, that you know that you're learning to increase in him. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Praise the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 2, verse 2 to 6, if you want to, in verse 2. So that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom, and apply thy heart to understanding. What it means to apply your heart to understanding? Oh, yeah, we understood when we were under tutorship. I don't need to understand anymore. I understand it all. That's all I need. No, you need to understand all through your whole life. We must work for the Lord, not just under tutorship where he's grown us and where we, yes, we seems like we increase by leaps and bounds, some of us, depending on your ability. And speaking about ability, there is a hundredfold, thirtyfold, and sixtyfold. But they're all in the fold. The only difference is between the 100, the 60, and the 30 is the depth and the ability that God gave because he's seen that was in you. And first of all, what he's seen in you is the seed line that you're his child. He doesn't change your ability. He didn't say, I'm going to give you ability. He's, the ability was placed in you at birth. But that ability had to be brought out. And God gives that spirit to bring that ability out. Now, can you see that we are still in a learning curve? We are here in that third watch. Where are we in time? Again, when the apostle, Brother Jackson, brought forth what time and seasons was, it meant centuries and decades. And nobody knew when the centuries would end. But it was so simple. It's in God's words. God had to anoint it for us, us to see it. And so though for when God opened up and says, now, wait a minute. In Matthew 24, 32, that generation will not pass away. There ain't going to be another century. Bingo, it's over. So it tells you how close you're getting in time. That's one beautiful nugget. It's not too deep. Even the 30-fold can understand that. But then, Jesus just didn't say that, only that. He says, when you see the fig tree put forth a branch, and start as starting to put leaves. In other words, these leaves means people. And starting to put leaves, you have to relate it on ground, something that actually transpired. Israel is that fig tree. It had a very small strip of land. Only about 0.6 million of a people that was, that was brought into the land in 1948. But when you, re, when you arrived in 1967... Because with all the land they had back there, they could only grow so much. They couldn't put much Jews in there. But 1967, there was the, the Six-Day War, fulfilling the scripture that Jerusalem no longer occupied. Yes, we see that. That's why Jerusalem become the burden stone that it is today. But at the same time, Israel got more land. So in other words, if you got more land, you can put more leaves and more people. And he says... When he said that when he puts forth a branch and puts forth more leaf at that time, he says summer starting now. That's your summer season. And when we looked at Proverb again, that he that gathers in the summer, we are gathering in the time from 1967 till the time the harvest would come and the harvest of the bride is the rapture. Right? So working through the summer season, while Luke and Matthew talks about that, while Luke talks about there's three watches. Then remember we talked about how in, the, in Mark where he says, he more or less emphasized you have to watch. 
You have a work to do. You can't sit on your backside and just rest. There's a work to be done. And so therefore, in the summer season, there would be three watches through the ministry of Brother Jackson, uh, Brother Branham, the ministry of Brother Jackson, and the fivefold ministry that's on ground now. Not everything that's claiming to be in the fivefold ministry is walking in this third watch. It would be nice if they would. But because of attitude and, and different things taking place, men have set their minds in different ways. But somewhere there's coming a, a point where God's going to bring this front and center. Okay, enough of this. He's going to move. When he moves miraculously with the Israel in that miraculous war, if he's going to move in a war-type measure with Israel, there's going to be a spiritual war within this bride when that time comes as well. Because not everything that's following these movements are all children of God. There's a lot of tares. And that'll be the final separation. And from that miracle war till we reach the Ezekiel war and the breaking of the seventh seal, the church will now have a small space of time that where what she has accumulated as truth now becomes full known within that core of a believer that God will see who they are, and that will be the bride coming to her completion. Then she's ready to see that seventh seal being broken. All right? So we are living, and when he said that generation shall not pass away, he was not pointing to 1948. He's talking about those that would see the leaves being put forth when Jerusalem in 1967, which is a spiritual point we can put. You can't go picking, well, oh, maybe I think it's 1980 and here and there. It was in that six-day war. More land, more leaves. So therefore, that's where summer season would start. That's where, after 1967, around 67, did not the bride start to receive a whole lot of instruction through the different ministries or the different Stages of watches that's been going through? Yes, that's when it took place. And so now we are no longer under centuries, we're under decades. From 1967 to 2017, we've gone through five decades, 50 years. And a generation is 70, by reason of strength, 80. We have 10 to 20 years. Before, we, before everything is finalized. Oh, but nobody knows the day or the time. Then it's time for you to wake up if you're saying that. Search diligently. Look at it. Let the Holy Spirit, and let's not be biased when we're looking at things. Just because I say it, I don't mean here you have to believe what I'm saying. I'd rather the Holy Ghost show you that this is true. I mean, to me, for me, it's very plain. You can see it on ground. You can follow it through. Just like you, we've seen the church ages as we've seen the seals. It's just as plain and as clear as clear can be. Well, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Yes. Was it just here? Under tutorship? No. And Jesus said, if any man follow me, that's in John chapter 12, verse 26. Where I am shall also be my servant. He didn't mean we'd be up in heaven is where he is in revelatory understanding that he's bringing on ground, his servant would be following along. When he brought Brother Branham on the scene, where Jesus was at at that hour concerning the revealing six seals, his servant was right in line. In the time of, of an apostle ministry, Jesus moved into that movement, that error, that truth that was bringing at that hour, and the servant was along, all in line. And so is it in this hour that the servants will be in line with what Jesus is doing in this hour. Well, let's just... 
what I want Trump to bring across, he has given us an, an, a measure of the ability that each and every one of us have, and that's just not the ministry. I'm thankful it's that way because you take the gifts of the Spirit. Do you want the preacher to have it all, the nine gifts? Well, first of all, I couldn't handle that either. But I'd like to see it in operation. But you can't work it up. You can't make it happen. There has to be a desire and a hunger for it. Just like in Azusa Street, when the Holy Ghost fell and those that spoke in tongues and prophesied and they prayed all night, they weren't doing that before that, in the hundred years before. But when that hunger puts there, it's to eyes to see when God's moving and to follow into it. A preacher don't have to tell you that. There's something inside that says, it's drawing you in that measure, that area. And I better stop because I'm going on overtime again. So I, I'm thankful that you're, you're patient here. So praise the Lord. And the brother and sister from Australia, I was with them last night and they send their love this way, and the brothers from Newfoundland as well. So, Lord bless them all too. So, let's just stand at this time. Heavenly Father, as we come before thee, our Lord, take the words that were spoken, use it as you would see fit. And Lord, we're ever so thankful for what you've done for us in this hour. Now, Lord, I just pray that you would bless my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus' name, I pray. Maybe we'll have the musicians to come, and then if someone has a need, then, and after that, we'll dismiss. You can be seated at this time. How great is our God How great is His
mercy. Rewrote my life. Your mercy. Rewrote my life. I should have fallen my soul cast down. But mercy. Let's all stand at this time. I'm going to ask Brother Chuck or Charlie to uh, dismiss in a word of prayer this morning. Yes, Lord. Amen. Lord, bless each one.